What's up, everybody? It's 12 Pack, and I am actually here right now joined by a legend of reality TV. I'm going to go out there and just say it right now. Um, Rock of Love Season 1, Top 3. Big show right there. Uh, Charm School, also Top 3. And you did pretty well on I Love Money, but obviously the show never aired. So we have with me right here and the host of the Talk of Love podcast, Lacey Skulls. Lacey, what's going on? Nice to see you. I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me on. My pleasure. It's, uh, it's great to see you as well. Lacey and I actually, um, I did a podcast for her on Talk of Love, and that was crazy. I had maybe 150 followers that day, 100 new YouTube subscribers. And, you know, aside from all that, just what you're doing is really great on that podcast. I think everyone who's done the show has kind of been like, hey, you know, we should do something like this. But you just like went out and did it. Uh, tell me about the podcast. You know, how did it, how did it come about? Oh, well, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. What's funny is I actually wanted to do a show slash podcast kind of thing a couple of years ago. I had this idea, but you know, people who know me know that I'm an activist and I'm, I'm very outspoken. I'm very political. I was going to do something that was, was having to do with politics, but as this Trump administration continued. It, it just got so exhausting for everybody on both sides that I'm like, I don't know that I myself even have the energy to dive into this. And I don't know if people want to really hear that right now. They really need some escapism. And um, what I've been noticing over the years is all of these shows, Rock of Love and and Flavor of Love and Daisy of Love and I Love New York, they're still so popular and VH1 keeps re-airing them and there's, there's very much still an audience for it. So I'm like, you know what? We all need some fun right now. We need some escapism. And so that, that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, you're, you're very well-spoken. You, you know, you just say it like it is, you know, and I think that's why people can get into it because it's not easy. I mean, everyone could look at it and say, okay, you can go out there. You got to do homework. You got to watch. And now you were a fan of a lot of these shows or do you actually have to go out and kind of start fresh for, with some people that people want to hear about? Yeah, I loved these shows. It's funny because I remember, you know, I'm not really like a big TV person. There's a, there's a few reality shows outside of this world that I watch. Like I love Survivor, but I, I don't, there's a lot of them that I don't watch that are really popular. And, uh, but I, I gotta say I was, hooked uh starting with surreal life i remember one year i was really sick and i was like i was couch bound for that day and uh and they were having a, a vh1 was having a marathon for surreal life and i'm a big fan of like vince neal and a lot of people who've been on that show so i'm like what is this i want to watch and i watched one episode i was like oh my god i can't get enough i was like it's like heroin to me these damn vh1 hmm. shows so yeah I, those vh1 marathons will do that to you too that's i think i got sucked in on that show like that as well i probably didn't watch it and then somehow i just saw all and then flavor Flav kind of uh with bridget nielsen's really what was like interesting to me at least you know it was incredible. It was incredible. And yeah, and I, and I loved Flavor Flav and then I got into Strange Love and got, of course, in, in the rest is history. But, uh, but yeah, it's funny. You watch one of those V1 marathons and then when the thing is over, you're like, what day is it? I haven't showered in a week and I haven't eaten food. And like, <laughs> you just get sucked in. So, so yeah, I loved them. So your premise of Talk of Love, obviously, is the Of Love shows where you're getting people from any of these shows? I mean, does it go just VH1? Are you on looking on other networks? Or is it just kind of that core group of like 51 Minds uh, type shows, really? Yeah, that, right. It's a chain, right? It's almost like one nonstop show. Almost. Yeah, it really, really is. Um, you know, right now I'm focusing on the, the VH1 of Love franchise, which is all of the shows that fall under the umbrella of 51 Minds, the production company that produced all these shows. So that includes Rock of Love, Flavor of Love, I Love New York, Daisy of Love, I, uh, I Love Money, and, uh, and oh, Real Chance of Love. So that's what I'm focusing on right now. Um, I will probably end up getting into the cast of Surreal Life as well. And um, beyond that, you know, um, I'm not really sure yet. T to be honest, what I really want to do in 2021, um, what I really want to do is have another podcast simultaneously. I'll, I'll definitely keep talk of love going, but in addition to that, I was going to do something with a similar format, but instead of 
uh, instead of interviewing reality stars, I would be interviewing like rock stars and pop stars and hip hop stars and, and people in the music world, just because I love music so much. So that would be something that would be really fun for me. Um, but right now, you know, I'm having a great time with Talk of Love. People, people love um, watching it. And I feel like there's just like a never ending, uh, a never ending string of amazing personalities and amazing people. Right. I have to say doing this podcast, one thing I've realized is the producers really did a phenomenal job casting these shows because people are great on the show, but you could, one could argue like, Oh, well, they're great. They're entertaining because that's the producers that guided that, or that's the editors that guided that. But what I'm finding is the majority of the people that come onto the podcast, they, I like, this isn't like an edited thing on my podcast. This is not a, um, a like a, a coached situation. These people, you know, as soon as we go like, all right, let's go. Their personalities are huge. They just turn on and I'm like, damn, like these people make my job easy because they're so entertaining and such fun people. Yeah. And they probably, some of them could have even gotten eliminated early on and you would have no idea. And they would have been maybe a better in a different setting and could have lasted to the end. I think just on, I love New York alone, we had guys that got eliminated first and I was like, I thought he was going to be here till the end. So it's gotta be yeah. cool to get, like some random people on there and uh, you know, they really shine and I say random, you know, maybe they didn't get their moment yet. So you're bringing them, bringing them back out. Yeah, absolutely. Well, perfect example of what you just said on my season, season one of rock of love, one of the most iconic people was um, Tiffany from rock of love, obviously not Tiffany Pollard, but uh, Tiffany, who was the, the drunken, crazy girl that was always doing the don't threaten me with a good time. She oh, was nice. so freaking funny. And, um, and she was only on our season for a couple of days. She almost didn't even get in at all. Oh. And uh, she told me when she came onto the podcast that she was actually up for consideration to come on to Charm School as well. And, uh, and the, at the last minute, they decided to have her just as like a, like a, a reserve person, like in case somebody couldn't do it and so they they flew her out to california and everything for charm school i'm like she would have been amazing for charm school she would have been so freaking funny i would have loved to have seen tiffany on charm school but um and there was other people there that their personalities were a little bit more subdued especially on my season of rock of love there was like two or three girls that were like quite frankly boring you know i didn't know why they were there yeah. so so yeah i hear you but i guess it, I, on the other hand i guess not every single person can be the crazy person you got to have some like <laughs> normal people too so to balance yeah. it out i hear that well speaking of the reality tv i mean why don't we go back to really before rock of love for you i mean how was that getting into that process for you and like were you prepared to be on a reality show i mean how did you even go about getting interviewed i mean well so when i was um I, I was born and raised in Dallas, Texas. And uh, when I was tw 27 years old, I left Dallas and I, I actually went to New York for a little while. I was there for a very short period of time. And um, while I was there, I, what's that? Too cold for you? Yeah, exactly. Uh, well, actually kind of, yeah. <laughs> I'm like the type of person, I'm like, if it's 65 degrees, I'm like, I'm freezing. Yeah. My husband's like, shut up. <laughs> You're being... Uh, no, I'm just kidding. But, um, but no. Um, so yeah, I was in New York for a little bit. And actually, the only reason I left is just because of um, career related stuff. That was the only reason I actually love New York. I love New Yorkers. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so I was there. And I literally was just, you know, looking for work and in, in the entertainment world, I was looking for opportunities. And I was going on Craigslist. And because uh, I didn't have an agent. And so what was funny is there was, there was a show that was being, um, that was being filmed that never actually saw the light of day, but it was Paris Hilton's mother. And it was kind of a charm school like situation where basically they wanted to take people that were just like a hot mess in life and kind of like reshape them and make them into these like nice upstanding citizens. And it's supposed to be Paris Hilton's mother. And I'm like, maybe you should do that for your daughter first. Yeah. yeah right. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I like, I like Paris, but, um, but anyway, so I auditioned for that. And afterwards, I remember the casting director reached out to me and he's like, so we are not going to go with you for this show. And, and he was like, it's kind of a, a, a positive reason why he's like, you're actually already a little bit more articulate and put together than what we're looking for. We're looking for like just idiots, you know? And he's like, but the reason I'm reaching out to you, because you don't usually get told if you're turned down for a part, they, don't, they just usually just don't call you. Yeah. But he's like, I'm calling you because I really, really like you a lot. And I cast for a lot of different things. I just want... I want to stay in touch with you because I feel like this isn't right for you, but maybe something down the road. So fast forward, I ended up doing some stuff with the band, which took me out of 
New York got me into California. I reached out to him when I first got to California. I was like, Hey, I'm here, you know? And he's like, Holy shit. I didn't, I didn't know you're actually going to like follow up with this, but I'm glad you did because I do have this show that I'm actually casting for about dating a rock star. And so I was a little bit more hesitant about that because given the fact that I have been touring in bands for so many years and I was usually the only female, it was really like, really, uh, I was always, um, accused, uh, mistaken. That's a better word. I was always mistaken for being like the girlfriend or like, so wh where's your man? Like, I'm, I, I am the man. Like it's, this is my band. And I've always thought but, that though. I've always thought like, there's the girl in the band. Come on. What's yeah, going on with our tour of us? You know, totally. Just, I know. But yeah, that's what it is. Like, you know, people come up to me like, yeah, you know, where's your singer? I'm like, um, here, <laughs> you know? And so, and they always thought I was like the groupie. So I really worked hard to kind of break that stereotype. So when I found out this was like a dating a rock star show, I was like, uh, I don't know if that's how I want to present myself. You know, I, I, I just, I had doubts about it, but eventually I was like, you know what? Fuck it. You know, um, <laughs> it, it's a great opportunity. When you know, else was Brett at this time? What's that? You knew it was Brett? That you were gonna was, go after? Yeah, I knew it was Brett, and I and I, I liked Brett. Like I like him as a as a person. I I mean I didn't know him as a person then, but I just liked what I knew of him. I really was a big fan of Poison. I liked his music, so I'm like that would be fun, you know. And it I was, was like, like it. 20 years earlier for Brett, though it might have, uh, you know. I mean, I'm sure the girl still had a good time. He's not a bad looking guy, but um, you yeah, know, I, mean, I don't know. What you what you think of Brett, like looks wise? I mean, obviously I, I'm playing for New York, but you know, I mean, right. To be honest, um, that was in 2007 on Rock of Love. I thought he looked great. You know, he's not exactly um, my type, my taste. I kind of like the grungier rocker yeah. guy. Like, I like, like, if it was like, not that this person would ever do it, but it'd be fucking amazing if he did. If it was like Trent Reznor doing like, you know, Nails of Love or something like that. <laughs> wow, okay, <laughs> we're all over that. Both of Love, yeah. I like, I like the kind of like darker rocker guys. So, Brett isn't exactly my type. I, I'm not into like blonde dudes and stuff but i think he's a good looking man um i thought he was incredibly charming and charismatic so i was like when else am i going to get an opportunity to be on a vh1 reality show like I, if i would be stupid to say no so i eventually kind of talked myself into it now i heard through the grapevine don't remember where exactly honestly um that you know there was things going down with brett and girls uh you know pretty regularly i mean is that uh, true i mean were you taking part? Who all was, uh, who all was, you know, with Brett, so to speak? Well, I will tell you this. Um, I have no problem talking about my own personal sexual experiences. I have like no shame and no shyness about that. But I do have a very specific rule that I don't kiss and tell. And the reason is because if the roles were reversed and, um, and there was, uh, a guy, let's say a guy had hooked up with me and if he was going around like, yeah, I banged Lacey, I would be fucking pissed. And also, I don't know what that, if I did or did not, if I did rather hook up with a guy, if, if I talk about it, he might have a, a wife or a girlfriend that that might not sit right. well with. So just out of respect, I don't kiss and tell. But I will tell you that, um, that there was some, some fun times were had. I'll just leave you at that. All right. Listen. I'm, I'm somehow a culprit of this, even though I'm not directly involved in this. I happen to tell an associate, an acquaintance, so to speak, who happened to say some things on TV. Um, and mind you, the crazy thing about my situation with all that, which I'm sure you kind of heard, and we won't mention any names, but um, I was dating like this other girl at the time of that reunion that came out. When oh, he got oh, up there and, no. said, and then these two girls are kind of like not going at it, but it was just kind of awkward. And the girl I'm dating is like super country, like Virginian, like Christian girl. And she texted me or called me right after and was like, I can't do this anymore. I mean, oh. it literally, yeah, I mean, so That's, I know what you're saying uh, on that. Yeah. And as I said, like I've had crazy sexual experiences and like I've had threesomes and all kinds of craziness. And I will always talk about myself and the experiences I had, but I just, I just won't name names out of respect because that, that sucks, man. Like, you know, it, it sucks if somebody's like talking about, like, you know, it was one of the, not to get off the topic here, but one thing, I was a big fan of, of Moby, not so much, I mean, I did like his music, but I just liked who he was as a person. He's very in, much into like animal rights activism stuff and, and the environment and everything. And then he posted some 
fucked up thing on Twitter several months ago about uh, Natalie Portman. And I guess like there was rumors that the two of them ho had hooked up and she was like kind of young when it happened and he was significantly older than her. Like, and when I say young, I mean like she was like a teenager. Like, I've and heard movie music, but I, I don't even, I feel like he's like a, uh, like a Banksy type where like you don't know what he looks like, you know, and you right. just hear music. <laughs> He's just kind of a plain old regular bald dude. He's just like kind of a nerd. Okay. Um, I've met him before. He's actually a really nice person. But he, he was like, so there was rumors about him and Natalie Portman. And Natalie Portman went out there and she was like, yeah, no, I didn't hook up with Moby. That didn't happen. And then for some reason, he was like, yes, it did. And he made it his mission. And he found wow. some photo of the two of them where she looks like a fucking child. And he posted it on Instagram. He's like, look, I hooked up with her. I hooked up with her. And I'm like, maybe she's. Maybe she's saying that because she just doesn't want the world to know her sexual business. She doesn't want the whole world to know who's been inside of her vagina. And you've <laughs> got to respect that, dude. And it was, it was so gross the, the way he did it. And everybody came fucking down on him. Like, it was, there was a serious backlash about it. And he was just trying to be like, no, I'm cool. Girls want to fuck me. And it's like, yeah, but dude, like, they don't want to admit to it, you know, and that's okay. They let them keep that to themselves. Right. So I just, I, I see these things. I'm like, yeah, I don't want to be that guy, you know, even though somebody might not have a problem with me going like, yeah, I hooked up with them. Um, I still just like, I want to respect their relationships and, and whatever else they got going on. So of course. Yeah. Well, I liked that show actually. Um, I didn't really watch all the VH1. I really wasn't involved in it, but um, I was on the show right before that uh, Rock of Love aired. So I love New York. So it's still kind of on the air. So I'd kind of browse on the channel a little bit and I'd see it. And of course, like Rock of Love Girls, that was more like my type. You know, I enjoyed watching yeah. watching that show. And chicks, yeah. one of the episodes has nothing to do with that. I mean, I'm a sports guy. I sell sports memorabilia, deal with pro athletes, run the regular. And I loved the episode where, I mean, it's memorable to me. One of the most memorable was when the Powder Puff, the Mud Bowl football game. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I just remember that for some reason. I don't know why I was like, that's kind of cool. Um, Evan, is that your sports guy? Yeah, I, I guess so. But I, yeah, maybe. And, and I always I always enjoy like watching girls play because that's not like a sport. Like you can't go play unless you play with guys. Um, so coming into this, like you're about to play football. And I, I'm sure you've never played football or have you before? Like what's your thought? I mean, did you even know you were going to play mud football at the time? Did they bring out an outfit and you're like, <laughs> dehydration you gonna be all right today you gonna yeah. vomit oh yeah hangover or no hangover i'm still gonna kick ass and win yeah. i'm just glad that finally there's a challenge that's athletic driven i know i'm gonna win this one the other ones the phone sex and the music not so much my thing sports definitely come on ladies come on line up Oh my goodness. There is mud all over the field and it's wet. I kind of want to go back in the limo and go home. Hey, good morning, ladies. I welcome you to the first annual Brett's Mud Football Game. <laughs> you can see. I will tell you right now, I suck at sports like that. Like, I'm really good at like snow skiing and horseback riding and you know other things that are like more balance based but anything where you have to throw or catch a ball i am just like the fucking worst like if i have to like like crinkle up paper and throw it into a trash can that's like two feet away i probably will miss even though it's like two feet away but um but yeah so that was crazy because when when we got there um not only were it was it was difficult enough that it was it was football and most of us were not you know, had no experience with that. But then they decided to like hose down the entire field and make it as slippery as fuck. And That's it was great. like, even if you are good at football, um, it, it was like an impossible situation because it was so slippery. And so um, I will say that Jess was incredible she she like she told me that she has brother not told me she told everybody that she has brothers and so she was used to like doing sports and stuff like that but she that girl man she's tough and i i really respect her for that but um but yeah i don't know what the hell i'm doing so um you know when i went out there um she well first i think uh she was going to tackle me and um and so i was like okay here it comes and, and i knew the ground was slippery so i just kind of like stopped instead of trying to get away from her i just stopped and i just planted myself and so the first time she went to tackle me 
I was like solidly planted so she couldn't get me down. So she, she tried. And then like when she realized that wasn't working, she just kind of like wrapped her arms around me and just threw her own body weight over, which threw me over too. And it was a, it was a good move. But when, what ended up happening is that my foot and my ankle were like not lined up the way they should be. So when I went down, it's just my ankles just went, and it just completely sprained it. And that, she, that wasn't her fault. She wasn't trying to do that. But right. holy crap, it hurt so freaking bad. All right, here we go. Hi, right, Sam. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> you know what? I want that date, damn it. If I have to, you know, break some girl's wrist or knock out some teeth, I'm going to do it. Go, 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 go. go. The tackling is starting early. The tackling is starting early. Lacey gets the ball. I'm charging that girl, and I'm laying her ass out. Blue, a one. Get it. Run, Sammy. Run, baby. Run, run, run. Run, run Lacey. Run, Lacey. Run. Hold the ball. Hang on. Hold the ball. So Jess tackles Lacey and she goes down like a ton of bricks. <laughs> Pretty gross. Oh. Right now. My ankle. Did you break it? It hurts so bad. Hold on, baby. Hold on. Oh. 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 My ankle. Like, sprained ankles are the worst. I mean, it just kills. So I was like laying there just in mortal agony. And I remember, I don't know why they edited this out, but one thing that was actually kind of sweet was Brett actually came running over and he was like, you know, um, knight in shining armor. Like, you know, he, he was like, oh, are you okay? And like took off my, 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 my sock and my shoe and like my ankle was already turning black and swelling up. So he just like scoops me up and like, you know, carries me off, you know, make sure I was okay. <laughs> so it was really sweet, but, um, but yeah. And it was really funny because, um, you know, as you know, people that were like online, the, the viewers of these shows, they could be pretty vicious. And I, you know, everybody hated me on that show and understand myself. And so um, when uh, I remember reading some comments about that, and a lot of people were like, God, the pussy, she's a pussy. I'm like, man, that fucking shit hurt. I wasn't being a pussy. I was a sprained ankle. Oh, yeah. No, I mean, I've, I think Dak Prescott, quarterback for the Cowboys, just had this. His ankle popped out. I've actually had the worst injury I've ever had. I was going up a quarter pipe on a skateboard. So picture you're going up and my foot as I went back to get some air, my foot plants, just like yours, and I was going 25 miles an hour. I mean, I was going fast to get air, and I snapped my leg. I have three pins in it. And I, so watching your injury and ever watching that injury, I always am like, man, I feel bad for the leg because I've been through it, and it's just like cringeworthy. You, know, you don't know, did my knee just get messed up? Did my ankle? You don't even know it at the time. You're just like, what happened? Did you go to the um, emergency room immediately after, or did you just like tough it out? No, I knew, well, I'd had a sprained ankle before, so I knew that that's what it was. And um, so <laughs> this was actually sort of funny. So I, I knew that with, with sprained ankles, unfortunately, the only way to make them heal is to basically do like four weeks of rest and you're just supposed to like just stay off of it and elevate your foot and put ice on it. Well, I was in the middle of the freaking show, so I couldn't, I couldn't stay off of it. That was impossible. And so I remember when I got back to the house, as you know, they, they take everything away from you. They take away your, your cell phone and you don't have a computer. You, you can't even have a book or a magazine or, or music or anything. So I went back to the house and I was like, all right, I'm going to get on the bed. And I'm going to prop my foot up, elevate it, put some ice on it and just chill. And I remember I was doing that and I was just like staring at the wall. Like literally I was just staring at the wall in front of me and all the other girls had gone in the other room and I was just staring at I'm like, I, this is not going to work at all. So I was like, fuck it. And I asked the production to go get some crutches for me and then I kind of did the crutches for a little bit but it was like rubbing sores under my arms i'm like fuck i'm just gonna have to hobble and so the whole and it sucked because there was like episodes where i had to wear heels i'm literally if you really after you hear me say this if you That's look tough. you can tell the whole rest of the show in every episode i am hobbling <laughs> yeah it's that's hard. terrible i mean you got this opportunity <laughs> to go on the show you're on it you do very well regardless but I mean, there's got to be challenges. Could you not compete in certain challenges afterwards? Or? Yeah, totally. Yeah, there was there was one where we had like a this tour bus challenge where uh, we had to like run off of the tour bus and like I had to go dive into a bump a dumpster and all that. And the the very end of that challenge, I, I ended up getting. Um, 
uh, I, I lost the challenge early on, so it really didn't matter anyway. But had I made it to the end of the challenge, it was literally like a running and jumping thing. I would not have been able to do that. So, so yeah, it cost me a couple of dates for sure. <laughs> and so ultimately, you, um, you end up finishing in third place. I mean, when you went, did you feel like it was your time? Did you know where you kind of hit off guard? Um, I had a feeling that I wasn't going to win, but I, I kind of did want to make it at least to second place. And I had like this, just this epic, insane, um, explosive, uh, fight with Heather, uh, during the parents episode. Mm -hmm. And so it was like, it, it was just, it got so out of control and it actually got really kind of personal. Like, I don't really mind if, um, fighting with the girls on the show because I always look at it as like, oh, this is going to make good TV and it doesn't really like personally affect me. But she got really shitty and she got shitty to my dad specifically and just felt it was like kind of hitting below the belt. And so I was like, I, I really don't want to go out on that note. It was just, it kind of threw me to be honest. And uh, so, yeah, I was hoping I would make it, I would, I'd stay around a little bit longer. Like at least I, I really wanted to make it to second place. That didn't happen. I was a little bit surprised and a little bit bummed out. But at the end of the day, I, I knew it wasn't going to, be a situation where I was actually going to be dating Brett Michaels. I was like one of the few girls to know that. So it was really just more of like an ego thing for me, you know? So I was like, ah, oh, fuck it. I had fun. <laughs> All right. Well, after that, I mean, did you think you were going to get on another show or I mean, how did, how did, you know, you got on charm school after, but I mean, how did that, uh, how did that play out for you? Did they just call you one day and they're like, Hey, we got another show kind of like they usually do. Yeah, that's, that's actually pretty much exactly what happened. I, I thought that was going to be it. I didn't think there was going to be, um other shows after that um so i just kind of went about my life and then i got a call uh several months later and they're like hey how would you like to do an another show and i was like i might want to do another show and they're like it's it's charm school and i was like oh okay and i i knew charm school from the flavor of love girls i watched that show but i knew it was monique and i was i was kind of on the fence about it and i'm like well who's going to be the the head mistress and they're like um, they're like, oh, well, we can't really tell you just yet. And I was like, all right, well, I don't know then. Um, can I, can I let you know later? And they're like, okay, we can tell you who the headmistress is. I'm like, man, you guys fold quick. And so, <laughs> so I was like, okay, who's the headmistress? And they go, it's going to be Sharon Osborne. I was like, fuck yes. I was so stoked because I love Sharon. I love Ozzy. You know, um, I was really excited. So at that point I was like, absolutely 100%. I would love to do this. So, yeah. so definitely the me most memorable moment from that show, and I don't think they even aired the full thing, has to be at the reunion when Megan and Sharon <gasps> yes, oh, yeah. got crazy. I mean, were you were you front row seat for that, or how did that go down? That was insanity. Um, so out of respect for both Megan and Sharon, um, I, I, I don't give every single detail. I try to just only repeat what I see online and try not to give more than that, but I, I, I can... I can give the gist. Basically, um, Megan was um, was definitely uh, was buzzed. You know, I mean, we had, it was a long day, okay. and you know, they get you there so early. And yeah. I kind of have like a pretty strict um, no day drinking rule for myself, but it's it's actually only because I get really tired if I day drink, and so I save my drinking for nighttime. So the other girls were drinking, and I wasn't really drinking, and Megan got tipsy, and she was having fun, you know, and so. Uh, when Rodia was up there, because Megan had that extra liquid courage, she was being like particularly uh, harsh with Rodia. Like it was like there were some burns there, you know. Yeah. And so I feel like Sharon was just trying to kind of come in. She kind of gave a little jab at at Megan. Um, and I think she was kind of doing that to just kind of like help Rodeo a little bit because Rodeo was being just annihilated by Megan, you know? And so it was, it was pretty harsh. And so Megan said something, I, I guess Megan was talking about getting her dog spayed or something. I don't know why that came up, but, but Sharon made some comment like, well, maybe you should get spayed too. Cause we don't need more than one of you or something that was oh, like, wow. a free... so then from there, Megan started uh verbally attacking sharon's husband ozzy and it was pretty vicious lily is very upset that she's not here right now lily has had surgery recently mm -hmm. and she's had her female purse removed so that she cannot procreate is that the doll that you dropped on the head and you really retarded other girls that in the audience could learn a lot from is that procreation is that always the answer no i think that you should join her and have that operation too really I do 
not great. think that you should be allowed to breed, my dear. I, I, you know what? I think that one of you is enough Actually, for any country. So does, uh, your husband, because the only thing he's managed to do to a celebrity is to wash your husband's. Oh. Oh. I feel so sorry for you. <coughs> Excuse me before I answer. <laughs> Let's have like uh, professional acting. Are you okay? Like, yeah, let's have practice. Let's <laughs> Damn, dude. Like, it was like... To take it to the family member is yeah. just, damn, you know what I mean? Like, wow. So she, she started verbally attacking um, Ozzy, and then that's when Sharon got up, and then she threw the drink on her first, and it was just so crazy. I remember seeing the front row, and Megan said her thing about Ozzy. I was like, oh, my God. And then Sharon threw the drink, and I was like, oh, my God. And then, like, <laughs> right. I, Everything was just like kept escalating, escalating, escalating. And then next thing you know, like Sharon's on top of Megan and like Megan's hair is being pulled. It was like, it was just nuts. And then the whole entire room, it felt like, was just on top of both of them, separating them. And I think it, it definitely shocked Megan. Like she, she just thought it was going to be a war of words. She didn't know it was going to go there. So Megan was like fucked up by it. Um, I wouldn't personally want to piss off Sharon Osbourne. So I don't know like why she felt comfortable going that direction, but but yeah, it was nuts. And so, um, uh, what was I going to say after that? Um, shit, I forgot where I was going with this. But yeah, it was crazy. It was just like, I, I had a front row seat to it. And it was just like, it was insane. And, um, and I do remember Sharon called me a couple of months later and she was like, yeah, so I'm thinking about, you know, pressing charge or no, she had to defend herself because Megan was pressing charges against Sharon. And she was like, do you have anything that you could add that I could add to my defense? I'm like, I, I really don't. Like, I just, I saw. It's all on like, camera. Yeah, know, yeah, yeah. It was a crazy ass situation, though. That, that sums up, you know, the Of Love uh, series right there. You know, it's pretty right. Funny. Yeah. You I know feel what like, you're going to get. <laughs> dude, every reunion show. I feel got so crazy. I, I felt like the reunion shows of, of all of these shows, it always came to a head. It, like if there was going to be a physical altercation, like that is where we have it. Happened. Yeah. That's I never room understood. when you got one last chance to go at somebody before they disappear. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's so crazy to me how many physical altercations there were. Cause that, that's just like, so not my style. Like I am definitely, I, I cause a lot of shit and I cause a lot of drama, but I'm not, I'm not one that like, once you start throwing punches, that just, it gets a little, gets a little tacky, you know? So I never take it there. Play by the rules. I, I had a little guy standing in my face telling me to hit him and I was laughing and he went home, you know? So you got it. Yeah. Go. Yeah, exactly. Well, also, it, it, if you let yourself get out of control like that, then to me, the other person is one because it it just shows they they got you, they got you, they got under your skin so much that you don't even know what else to say or do, and that's all you know to do is just start throwing punches. That means that they they got you. You know, that's the way I look at it. Of course. Well, so of the shows you did, I love money three. Uh, nobody knew about that, and I was actually checking out like the order of um, the show. It was surprising to see certain people did what they did. It was pretty crazy the way it all went down as well, but I can see why it didn't air because the guy Ryan ended up like running it from what I saw. It was pretty, I mean, pretty impressive. Um, but in terms of the three that you did for VH1, what was your favorite experience on the show? Definitely I Love Money 3 for sure. And it sucks mm. that it, it, it went the way it did, but I mean, it was, I think that you can relate to this. It was, it was fun having a co-ed environment. You know, it is, it is weird. I have a lot of girlfriends. Yeah, you did two with all girls. So yeah, it's, it's like going to Catholic school and then you go to Right. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's strange being just with all of, of just your own gender. So it was cool to have all the different personalities. It was awesome being in Mexico. The challenges were fun. It was nice. We got to get, you know, away from the house on a more regular basis than we did when we were in charm school and rock of love. You're just like stuck there. You can't leave, you know? So, um, it was, it was really fun. I had a great, great time. And also I feel like by the time I got to, I love money three, I had already done all of, you know, the whole season of rock of love. I did a cameo of season two of rock of love. I did a cameo of season three. I had done the full season of charm school. So I felt like I had a, a nice, uh, education under my under my belt. So like I, yeah. I, I knew what I was doing and I, I knew how to play the game. So I felt like I was 
fully prepared. Um, and it was, it was just fun also. And you got to see a little bit of I Love Money and kind of see how the game was played a little bit. Was it played the same? Yeah, as yeah. As it was throughout? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I was familiar with it already just from watching we got We got thrown in. I had no idea. You know, we had no idea. We knew we were going to Mexico. We didn't know how it was going to play or whatnot. And it took a couple of days to, like, start realizing, should we, like, become alliances? Like, we, we didn't know. Um, we had to figure oh, out. Oh, really? So guys. what did they tell you it was? How did they explain it to you guys? It's competition for 250K. And here's wow. the house. Good luck, you know? And then kind oh, of. Oh, my God. Brawl, That's. You know? crazy that's crazy so did you know it was gonna be like physical competitions and stuff like I that i came in pretty good shape like i came ready to like physically compete uh, absolutely um and i was worried i was worried i was gonna be like a target right off the bat because uh, it was only a couple guys that were like kind of the bigger guys on the teams the, the athletic types because they have a mix of people you don't have every character of the athletic like guy type so it was like me entertainer and you know like that was very limited um and one of the, David Otunga, a uh, punk who was like a WWF wrestler, he got cut yeah. like, in the hotel in Mexico, didn't even make it on the show. And we were expecting oh. to compete with him. And I was like, okay. And that's two shows where like the guy bigger than me got like cut <laughs> right off the bat. And I was like, all right, I'll take, I'll take over that spot. Wow. Uh, that is crazy. Yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah. Technically it was the first season of I Love Money. So you didn't have anything to like base it upon. So, wow. That's interesting. I never even thought about that. That's interesting. Uh, it just worked out because I was friendly with everybody. But um, in terms of, like, where people can find you now, Lacey, what's the best way I see you're on YouTube, but where can, where, where can they most act actively find you? Uh, I'm most active, besides the YouTube channel for, obviously, the Talk of Love podcast, I'm most active on Instagram. So if you just, you can find me, my personal account is Lacey Skulls Official. Uh, Skulls is S-C-U-L-L-S. And, uh, and then the Talk of Love podcast, uh, uh, there's, there's Instagram for that as well. Um, I am on Facebook and um, Twitter. If you just search Lazy Skulls, there's, there's literally just one of me, in the, <laughs> literally in the whole United States. So, uh, so you can find me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, um, and, and YouTube. And the podcast has got, what, 40 episodes or something now? 30 plus episodes? Yeah. I just filmed my 42nd episode yesterday with Cocktail who was the winner of For the Love of Ray J. She was also on Bad Girls Club. And she, uh, she made it all the way to second place on my season of I Love Money 3, the, the canceled season. So she was like, made it all the way to the wow. end. So yeah, she, so she spilled lots of tea on that, which was really, really fun. So, um, so yeah, yeah. If you go to um, youtube.com slash talk of love, uh, you can watch the podcast there. It's also on Spotify and Apple Podcasts and wherever you like to watch your podcasts. Awesome. That's awesome, Lacey. Well, we love what you're doing. I love what you're doing. I appreciate you having me on the Talk of Love, and I appreciate you coming on the 12-Pack Party podcast. You know, this is where we have a good time, you know, and it's about that time for me to have a little uh, – little snifter you forgot your snifter again it's okay i know you know what when this COVID thing is over i definitely want to have a reunion of, of all of us and because listen i do love to drink don't get me wrong we've all seen it so uh we, we gotta do, do like, vegas then i'm ready for vegas. yeah yes we gotta make that happen and then we will we will have all of our shots and drinks in person i'm ready i'm down all right well thanks for coming on lacy catch up with you later thank you take care dave <laughs>